Hi, I'm Mark Kolbeck. I'm here with Dale Northeast, and we're going to be talking about how to do the call completion port part of the scenarios. Um, so I'm going to be using the mnemonic I see I had vital signs assessed and treated, and I'll be explaining how I do that as we go through it. Dale's very graciously volunteered to be my guinea pig. He's going to help me out. So the I in I see I had stands for identify the patient. If we're talking, I'd say, hi Dale, my name's Mark. I'm a paramedic. Um, I'd like to ask you a little bit about what's going on. First of all, can you tell me your full name? Dale Robert Northeast. Okay, and I'd be writing all this down as I do it. I'd ask uh, your age? 25 years old. All right, and your date of birth? It's the 9th of the 9th, 1985. Okay, I'd get his address, and if he has a health card or information number, I'd write those down as well. That's my identification of patient. Second thing I'd move to is the chief complaint, and the initial part of the chief complaint is asking an open question. So I'd say something like, so what's wrong, Dale? Uh, abdo pain. Having a bit of abdo pain. Okay. Moving from the open question, I'd ask a slightly more closed question, and I'd say, do you have any pain or discomfort in your head, your neck, your chest, your belly, your arms, or your legs? No, I feel fine. It's just abdominal pain. Just in the belly. Okay. That's my next stage of closed question. After that, I'd get very specific, and I'd be asking about altered mental status, ischemic chest pain, or shortness of breath. So first, for altered mental status, I'd say... Uh, do you feel lightheaded or dizzy? Does it feel like the room's spinning? No, I feel fine. Okay. And is there any sense of pressure, or heaviness, or discomfort in your chest? Not so much the belly, but the chest? Uh, no. No, that's okay. And any problems breathing? Any difficulty breathing? Shortness of breath? No. Nothing. Okay. So now I'd be thinking about my three critical signs of altered mental status, ischemic chest pain, shortness of breath, and I realize there's none of those. If there was one, I would prioritize what are there and which one started first, but fortunately I don't have to worry about that in this particular scenario. So I've done my identifying the patient, I've done my chief complaint, the next I in ICI is the incident history. And for incident history I use the NOPQRST mnemonic, which is just how I organize it, and the N stands for normal. So uh, I'd be asking, so when was the last time you felt normal and felt okay? This morning, probably 8 a.m. Okay, 8 a.m. O stands for onset. And I'd ask, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how fast or how slow this came on and what you were doing? It was a gradual onset over many hours. Okay, so it wasn't a sudden, oh, my belly hurts. It was more of a, you noticed it coming? Yeah, it came in from the morning and got worse by the afternoon. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, P stands for provocative or palliative, and that means what makes it worse and what makes it better. So what I'd say to the patient is, have you noticed anything makes this worse or better? It seems about the same. Okay, that's the open question. I'd get a little bit more closed then and say, uh, does resting make it better or moving around make it worse or anything like that? Doesn't seem to change. Doesn't seem to change. Okay. Uh, Q stands for quality and R stands for radiation, which aren't really assessments that we do in something like abdominal pain. Uh, I might ask if that discomfort in your belly goes down into your hips or your back or your shoulders at all? Just in the belly. Just in the belly. Okay. Uh, S is for severity, and the typical way we ask this is we ask the patient, can you rate how bad it is on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being no pain at all, and 10 being the worst pain you've ever had? I'd say 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10, okay. An important part of that assessment is don't flip it around. Don't just for the sake of variety or something say with 1 being the worst pain ever and 10 being no pain at all, because if you write 3 out of 10, everyone who is medical who reads your chart later is going to assume that 1 is no pain and 10 is the worst pain. So always use the scale that way. Don't flip it. Uh, the next thing is the T, and I'm going to ask if this is typical or if there's been any trauma. So have you ever had a pain like this before? Are you familiar with this? No, sir. No? Don't know what it might be? or No idea. Okay. And I'll ask also T stands for trauma. Have you had any... Uh, uh, injuries to your belly? Have you been hit or no injuries. coughing a lot? Nothing. Okay. And the last thing, the U stands for undigested food. I want to get an idea of how much food is in the abdomen or in the stomach. So I'll say, uh, when was the last time you had a meal? Uh, earlier today, this morning. So around how many hours ago? Four, four hours ago? Okay. Was it a big meal or something small or how much food did you have? Pretty big. Pretty big. So a full breakfast? A full breakfast. Okay. So I've done my ICI, which is Identify the Patient, Chief Complaint, Incident History. And my incident history, I use the NOPQRSTU mnemonic. Now I'm going to move to H for the ICI had. H stands for history, or fully, it stands for past medical history. So I'll ask Dale, uh, do you have any past medical history at all? 
uh, suffer from asthma. You have asthma. Okay. Um, is there anything else or is it just the asthma? No, just asthma. Okay. So that's my open question, what's wrong? When he tells me something that's wrong, I ask if there's anything else. I'll ask a slightly more closed question now and say, so no problem with your heart, diabetes, epilepsy, anything like that? No, they're all good. Just the asthma. Good. Okay. Now I'll move to the A, which is allergies, and I'll ask Dale the initial open question of, do you have any allergies at all? Uh, no, not really. Not really. Okay. Then I'll ask slightly more closed and say, so you don't have any allergies to chemicals or anything in the environment or food? Uh, not chemicals, but I am allergic to dust and mold. Dust and mold, okay. And that's why we ask specifics, because sometimes patients don't think of those as medical allergies. Whenever a patient tells you that they have an allergy, always determine whether it's a true allergy or just a slight uh, reaction to it. What we're looking for is any evidence of something that would lead to anaphylaxis. So I'll ask Dale, when you're exposed to grass, uh, what happens to you? How do you, how do you react? I uh, just get a runny nose. Runny nose, okay. Do you get any itching on your skin or ever feel your airway closing up or your heart beating really fast? No, all, all that's fine, just runny nose. Nothing like that, okay. So allergies to dust and mold, anything else? Uh, no. That's it, okay. So that's my A in the HAD, the uh, history, allergies. Last thing is going to be drugs. So I'm going to ask specifically about three types of drugs, prescription drugs, over-the-counter, and illegal or illicit street drugs. So first, the open question, and I say, do you take any medication at all? Uh, only for my asthma, which is just Ventolin and Prednisolone. Prednisolone, okay. How often a week do you take the uh, Ventolin? Uh, Ventolin, I probably take every day. Every day, okay. Uh, interesting aside about that is maybe at this point we should take a look at working up his... Uh, his asthma medication because Ventolin isn't supposed to be used every day. If you're using it every day, you got to take a look at increasing the steroids, but that's not really a part of this scenario. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's the open question. Uh, you take uh, Ventolin and Prednisolone. Do you take anything else? No, that's all. Nothing. Okay. So those are prescription medications. Do you take any over-the-counter medications like Tylenol or Panadol? Uh, no. ASA? Nothing. No. Right? Okay. And have you done any street drugs or illegal drugs? Not in a long time. Not in a long time. Okay, so you, that wouldn't be contributing to what's going on no, in your body right not. now. Okay, and nothing else, just those two meds? Just those two. Okay, so that's it. So at this point, I've done identify chief complaint, incident history, past medical history, allergies and drugs. That's my ICI had. The next part of the mnemonic is vital signs, and I'd be asking my partner to work with Dale and take a complete vet set of vital signs, and also then to do the physical assessment. Uh, and after I have, can take the information from the interview that I just did and the physical assessment that my partner did, uh, I'd work on creating a treatment plan. And that would be the use of the call completion mnemonic, ICI had, vital signs, uh, assessed and treated.